divorce. Ouch. Okay, so it's not the happiest topic, and some of you honestly probably don't think this talk is for you, but divorce is out there, and we've all been affected by it in some way. And you probably can all agree that the word divorce comes with some pretty negative connotations. Maybe you have parents that are divorced. Maybe you're divorced. Maybe you know friends, family, coworkers who are going through a divorce. And because we're all affected in some way and it's out there, this talk is for you. Buckle up, here's another downer. Statistics show every 13 seconds there is one divorce in America. To put that in perspective, nine divorces happen in the time it takes a couple to recite their wedding vows. By the end of this talk, 51 couples will be divorced. And to top it off, half of all the children in the US will witness the ending of their parents' marriage. Now I know there are others out there who have had it much worse than me. Please know I do realize my situation is nothing compared to what other people have gone through. But today I wanna to shift your perspective and leave you with some new thoughts and new ways to tackle divorce and possibly life itself. Because see, this talk isn't just about divorce. It goes much deeper. It really is about you realizing it's not about you. I know that may sound a little confusing, so let me explain. I am a divorcee. It was one week before my 10 year wedding anniversary. My husband and I were attending a couples therapy session. About three minutes into the session, my husband told me he didn't wanna try anymore. He didn't wanna be married to me anymore. Talk about a blow. And then hatred, seething hatred, hurt, sadness, confusion, repeat, repeat, repeat. I never expected this to happen to me. See, my parents were just about to celebrate their 41st wedding anniversary. Marriage, sticking together, fighting for family, that's all I ever knew. And we, we were fighters and overcomers. We could make this work because it was just two and a half years prior that our house burned down. Now, praise God, everyone made it out safely. The house was a complete loss, but what was most important, our family was safe. We spent the next year and a half rebuilding our dream home. It was so fun and exciting. We were so strong and close and focused on family and rebuilding together. But somewhere among the four to five days a week my husband was traveling and me becoming a full-time stay-at-home mom, our marriage began to struggle. And that's when we were about to celebrate our anniversary. Instead, I got hit with that horrific word divorce. It hurt. I was broken, devastated, defeated. I felt like a failure. My marriage is ending. But wait, I have two boys. What about the kids? They're three and five. All I'd known was a family that stayed together. What's it going to look like to have to split time with my kids, miss part of their lives because it's not my weekend to be with them? This rocked me to my core. I didn't want this, I didn't ask for this. Me, me, me. And as much as it deeply affected me, I had to look at the bigger picture. This is happening. And I had to make a decision to put my kids' needs above my own, just as I did when I was married. It should be no different when you're divorced, except it is, because now there's hurt wedged in. And it's extremely challenging to make decisions and work together and act not based on how you feel, rather on how you may make your children feel. And this is why among the division of assets and setting up our child visit schedule and who pays what, we took time to talk and made a decision that no matter what, the kids come first, period. That regardless of how we felt about each other, this isn't about us. It's not about the hurt we had or the miscommunication throughout our marriage. It's not about the anger or the pain or frustration we had with each other. This is about making the best out of a tough decision and situation. To put the boys as the priority because they're what's most important, not us. They didn't ask for this. They didn't choose to have a mom who lives in one house and a dad who lives in another. I didn't choose it either, but I did choose to show them that regardless of where they slept at night or whose weekend it was, they were part of a family every day. A family where the mom and dad make every decision based on their best interest. Not his, not mine. Was it hard? Yes, it still is, all the time. But when I put my feelings aside and make theirs the priority, I feel so much better because I know it's what's best for them. 
As a parent, you want nothing but the best for your children. You'll do absolutely anything you can to protect them. If there was a grenade, you would be the first to jump on it to save your child's life. It truly is a love like no other. But when divorce enters in, it seems the hatred and hurt and devastation that surrounds it overtakes that love. And instead of protecting our children, they often become collateral damage. And this is where we need to stop being selfish and start a conversation. Open the doors of communication so you can effectively co-parent with your ex. Now, co-parenting isn't easy. It's hard parenting when you're married, so trying to do it with your ex isn't exactly ideal. I get it. Remember, there's a reason why you got divorced in the first place, so you can't just expect all of the issues you had when you were married to just go away. You can, however, acknowledge that you two are in this thing together and are going to be for a long time, so you might as well take the high road and figure out a way to develop a relationship. Now, maybe that's a friendship, maybe it's not, but it has to be some type of relationship where respect, support, understanding, and communication are present. For me, at the time of my separation and divorce, I was working for my husband's company. I stayed on because I loved what I did and supported what the company did. So now I'm separated, co-parenting, and working alongside my ex-husband. Wow, that's nearly unheard of. Oh, oh yeah, and maintaining a civil friendship because it's important so we can do what's best for our kids. I say this to emphasize that divorce isn't easy. I know. You have to choose to not be mad, not be angry, not hold a grudge, not to want to throw things. All the while, you're fighting back tears and feeling like you're dying inside, having to be in the same room with that person, celebrating holidays and birthdays because it's important for your kids to have both parents there together to celebrate big life events. And I say it because it can happen and it does work but you have to put yourself and your pride aside and you have to be persistent. You have to constantly make an effort to make this happen. Do you always want to? No, but you do want what's best for your kids. So how does it work? You have to choose to want to make it work. You have to make that conscious choice to work together. And if your ex isn't willing to do it, you do it. You make that decision for you and your children. Chances are your ex will eventually come around. Be a team. You both want what's best for your kids, so work together. Communicate. But when you do, keep it to the kids' needs. Don't get off track on the differences you two have together. Respect each other and the relationships your children have with your ex. They are a product of both of you. Teach them how to respect others by showing each other respect. Include your kids in the conversations, but keep it to their maturity level. It is much harder to pit one parent against another when they know that you are communicating and are on the same page. I mean, after all, they are still kids. But it is hard, I know. And I know some of you may be thinking, well, you didn't have any major issues like abuse, addiction, or abandonment, because I know marriages can end in terrible circumstances. But we also probably know a situation where a mom and dad can't even be in the same room together, which makes marriages and the holidays, even exchanging the kids, an absolute nightmare. But we also know the only thing we can control is our attitude and the decisions and choices that we make. Now, my marriage may or may not have had those extremes. I had to make that decision to put my kids' best interest ahead of my own. When people hurt, they make decisions that hurt others back. That's normal. But that's where you need to dig deep and remind yourself what really is most important. And this can be applied to divorce, conflicts at work, family feuds, broken relationships. Life is so short. I am just now a little over three years into my divorce, but I know and have met other couples who have been divorced eight, nine, 10 plus years who are just now getting to a point where they have a good relationship and good parenting relationship. They have said to me, I wish we would have done this sooner. We missed out on so much we could have been doing together. So much can be lost. Don't wait until the kids are grown to be civil. There is hope now, and I am living proof that with work, it can happen. It does work, and you can do it too. Now, our boys know they are loved. They know that mommy and daddy respect each other, help each other, 
and make every decision based on their best interest, not ours. We wanted to minimize the negative effect divorce could have on our kids as best we could. That was the decision we made at the very beginning, and we've stuck to it. Now, I am happy to report I have met an incredible man who shares in our philosophy of kids first. We are now engaged, and we all get along. This is actually a picture of us together on Halloween, passing out candy, trick-or-treating. Why? Because seeing those smiling faces, making those special memories together, makes me the happiest mom ever. So I ask you, if you find yourself in this situation, or if you know of someone else going through the situation, what do you do? What advice do you give? Is it to put the kids first? Or is it to bash the ex and feed into the negativity that so commonly surrounds divorce? Because I get it, that's natural. But divorce isn't and shouldn't be natural. So I'm asking you to be unnatural. Shift your mindset. Choose to put the kids first because no child ever asked to be stuck in the middle of a divorce.